Welcome inside our San Francisco studios. Mike Am and Yogi Roth with you every single Tuesday on Pac-12 Network. The two of us talk all things Pac-12 football. You do not want to miss it at 6 p.m. Pacific time. They usually give us a little bit of forum to kind of go off script, so to speak, yeah, and focus on a couple things. Look, the reality is we're, we're still going to talk about uh, significant matchups on Tuesday's show, but the reality is we're, we're creeping a little bit closer to the college football playoff rankings. The two of us have both done that mock selection, so we kind of understand the way the committee is thinking about some of these teams. The reality is you've been saying this for a while. The conference still is going to have a team in that conversation as long as a team like Utah, Oregon, went out and it's a one loss Pac-12 champ. They're going to get some help. Turns out they've been getting help these last couple weeks for some of these undefeated teams that have been dropping like flies. So explain it to me, man. At this point, do you still look at Oregon as a team that's going to run the table and be potentially one of those final four squads? I don't know. I mean, to me, it's them in Utah. Sure. Right. Like so. But yes, to answer your question, Oregon is one of those teams that are, should be in that conversation. The, the challenge will be, and we both sat in it, you referenced our mock CFP selection committee experience. You're asked and you're tasked to talk about the four best. Sure. Some people look at, will look at the four best and say, body of work. Oregon, one loss, Auburn, great game, week one of the season. I'll play them. Won a title, yeah. let's roll. Let's just say they beat yeah. Utah and win the title. If you flipped it, and let's say Utah beats Oregon and Oregon's resume, the, the opposite could be said. Not the greatest non-conference schedule. Didn't have to really play anybody that sure. difficult as their season went on. The teams that they miss in the Pac-12 North. Like, you can make all these excuses to say body of work versus best right now. So I'm so curious to hear what the committee does next week if these two teams win this weekend. All right, last time I checked here, Utah, while we love talking about them as a team that, that could be a Pac-12 champ with one loss, they still need some help right now. And the fact that USC is still a pretty darn good football team and gets to play this week at home, like I, I feel like it might be a little premature to write off the Trojans. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I think it's kind of interesting. Utah and Oregon both cheering for each other. Yeah. You know, like you, you need Utah to be a one-loss champ for Oregon to play in the title game, to, to bump other one-loss champions, which is going to happen sure. in the CFP. Uh, and you're right, the Trojans, like, they're playmakers. I think it's fair to say, you know, we thought Washington State, Colorado's receivers are talented as the season has gone on, but SC's guys have just elevated. You know, what they do is special. Michael Pittman literally willing his team to win yeah. last weekend in Colorado. Amon Ross St. Brown basically plays running back, right, on a huge play early on in that ball game. So... It'll be fun. I don't think SC should – they shouldn't win this game. Their defense, we'll see what happens. Drake Jackson not expected to play. Christian Rector potentially will play. Talano Hufunga, I don't think he's going to play. Pelie now, Teote. So you're talking about like some heart of their defense. Yeah. So it'll be challenging. If they win, or even if it's competitive, like I, I think people need to still pump the brakes. But your point on the title, yeah, the Trojans – they still say, hey, we win, we're, we're, we're rolling. All right, from an Oregon perspective in this game, heavy dose of the run. I mean, look, we're already seeing it last four games. There are upwards of 200 and some odd, 240 yards per game. I think it's actually a, a hair more than that. First three games, they were basically getting to that 150 mark. So there's been a little bit of a shift in the way that they, they're running their offense. C.J. Verdell's been a monster. We just saw that this past weekend. I, SC's had some problems against premier running backs, especially when it comes to, to tackling out on the outside. Is that just sort of the, what you expect to see from Oregon in this game? I think so, but it'll be fun to watch them offensively because you think about them, if you go back to just last year, right, this is a team that had a lot of success and then they stalled, right? They lost on the road to Washington State. They had a really bad game on the road at Arizona. I look at them this year. They've had a tough stretch here, sure. Mike. Like, can, how can they – can they keep it up is kind of the point. Can they remain? Because it's going to be a physical game. It's not like SC rolling out dudes like you and me playing. I mean, they have no. NFL guys. They're playing really talented players. Jay Tefele is as good of a defensive lineman as they're going to play against all season long, including those guys from Auburn, Marlon Tui, Pelotu, et cetera. So it's not like they're just going to move dudes, right? They're totally different defensive linemen than who they played a week ago in Washington State regarding the athleticism. I mean, it'll be a physical game. And Wazoo won some of those battles. So yeah. I don't think it's fair to say they've just – slapped everybody around they've played, but they need to run the football. And they remind me a lot right now, a little bit of Stanford with Andrew Luck in terms of mm. you, you didn't see crazy numbers from Luck. You don't see crazy numbers from Herbert. You see dramatically efficient numbers, dramatically efficient play calls, and they win the game, which is the point of this thing. So I think they'll go in and be able to dictate terms, win the game. They won't win every matchup at the line of scrimmage, but 
they should be able to run the football when they need to, and that will be a critical component of this game. I remember the SC Utah game, which obviously the Trojans won, and there were obviously some some explosive plays that did Utah in some other issues as well, which we don't have to get into. But the, a week later, uh, it was Washington State was the opponent. We were uh, there in Salt Lake City for that particular matchup. They saw the air raid two weeks in a row. Oregon now is just saw the air raid, right? It's a different form of it. Washington State now they get USC. It felt like Utah was able to make some necessary adjustments. We obviously saw that on the football field. It was a bad rain day, so I don't know how much of a factor that is. But the fact that Oregon has now seen a similar type of passing attack from what they're going to see, how much of an advantage is that for their defense? I think it's really good, to be quite honest with you, because you're repping it. You know, Mario Cristobal sure. talked about in his postgame press conference of, you know, air raid teams – they do what they do, which isn't a lot, but they do it so often with such repetition that they gain mastery of it, much more than the defense when the defense is practicing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to prepare for Friday and then, of course, the game. Now you get to do it back-to-back, -back. and there's a lot of similar threats. Run game is different, Washington State, USC, but sure. SC's running backs. We'll see if Stephen Carr can come back, but it's not like they're at full strength there. So, yeah, I think it's big, and let's remember, they'll probably get a boost with Troy Dye. I think we're going to we'd assume that he's going to play in this ball game, returning to Los Angeles to play you know, for the first time since 2016. Looks so, like both guys, by the way, will be playing in this one. So. Yeah, good call. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's extremely beneficial. But let's remember, why, why do we love offensive football? If you're trying to cover me, I know where I'm going. You yeah. don't know where I'm going. Nope. Right? And if I'm I'm in Rice St. Brown, and you could be. Diamondor Lenore, you could be Javon Holland. It doesn't matter. You're still going backwards, bro. So I, I think it's still advantage SC. Can Keen Slovis put together a game where he doesn't have errors? I mean, he got lucky last game. Sure. Dropped pick. He tried that crazy throw in uh, the game in one of the uh, touchdown drives in the fourth quarter. Sack caused fumble. They recover. You can't do that in this game. There, there's no room for those types of errors. So he's going to play his best. He's shown flashes that he can. But, but overall, yeah, man, it's, it's going to be best versus best, and the playmakers have to rise up. All right, so Oregon SC certainly could decide both divisions. Both of these teams essentially need wins. Um, UW we're not talking about as a team that's going to win the North, but we are talking about Utah making a push for that South Division crown. The matchups on the field, what stands out for you? There's so many good yeah. ones. And, and NFL scouts will be all over this game. I mean, you've got to start Trey Adams, right? It was two years ago we were talking about Trey Adams was going to leave college early he's been injured now he's still there at the left tackle position well he's going to be facing Bradley and I the best pass rusher in this conference and some may argue I'd be one of them one of the top few in the country inside Nick Harris on the offensive line against Lecky Fotu I mean that's gonna be awesome just to watch in the trenches and then I go to the playmakers Hunter Bryant at tight end against Javelin Guidry Javelin Guidry will play the slot Hunter Bryant will play that position as the hybrid tight end wide receiver and then I go outside Puka Nakua, I just have a hunch he's going to get an, an enlarged role. You know, he had a nice play in their most recent game, sure. nice little touchdown, bye week. Usually for young players, it's the best thing for them to get a break in the season, especially at the skill positions. He's a deep threat. And you go back to the SC tape, you referenced it. You know, Jalen Johnson's given up one deep ball all year. Who is it against? Pittman. It's the Trojans, yeah. like similar yeah. skill set in terms of down the field type sure. throws. So Jacob Beas is going to have to make plays, but this is not a game. And, and if you think Utah's going to roll like they have, you're going to be sorely mistaken. This is going to be a great game like it's been every time sure. these teams have faced off. All right, when the games are over, we got everyone covered Pac-12 Network on Final Score. You and I will do more of a deeper dive on uh, the show that we're doing on our social channels at Yogi Roth, at Mike underscore Yam. You can find it on Twitter and on Instagram. It's called The One. And, of course, we're making a push for the college football playoffs. So in a week or so, we're going to get those first initial rankings. We got everyone covered on Tuesday inside Pac-12 football. Do not miss it at 6 p.m. Pacific time on Pac-12 Network. That's a lot of promotion there to finish yeah, out the show. It's a good finish. Yeah, we've got to finish strong.